Scotch and Scottish ales are known for being definitely sweeter, malt forward than other ales. And there's a particular form of Scotch ale, possibly the better known here in America, known as the Wee Heavy. Its name is a paradox, a contradiction. Wee means little and heavy means big. And it generally means a beer that is very high in ABV. You're looking at 10% almost as a minimum and higher. Today I have the barrel-aged Scotch Silly by Brasserie Silly of the Wallonia region of Belgium. It is a 10% ABV, 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 or at least it was, back in 2018 when it was bottled. And this one has been aged in Chardonnay barrels. So let's see if that woodiness and dry wine barrel helps balance out what is typically a very sweet beer. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. I've been looking for an excuse to pour this beer for a very long time. And I just decided I'm not going to make excuses any longer. I'm just going to pour it. So it pours. Oh, the dark side of honey. That's a pretty beer. In my experience, uh, Scotch Ales, Wee Heavies, haven't been my favorite. While I do prefer uh, malt forward beers over hoppy beers in the past, um, even then, the Scotch Ales are just sweet. They are, their, their wort is boiled particularly long, so long that some of the sugars in the wort actually begin to caramelize, which takes a long time at boiling temperatures. Sugar is known to caramelize at a generally a higher temperature. Um, so that adds to the, the sweetness of the, of the final beer, as caramelized sugars, I don't believe, are as easily acted upon by the yeast. It also helps produce the color um, because caramelized sugars are browned sugars, similar to the Belgian beers, the Abbey style or the Trappist ales, where much of the color and the flavor comes from the candy sugar that, is, that I discussed in the, um, I believe it was the Monkish Brewing uh, uh, video that I did a couple months back. Anyways. So, so this is not a style I typically have preferred, just for its sweetness, but as this one has been aged in a Chardonnay, Chardonnay barrel, blah, 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 all my tongue not working right, um, as this one has been aged in a Chardonnay barrel, I'm very interested to see how that dry, oaky treatment uh, and possibly some, some fruit uh, you know, grape-like, grape wine aspects might help balance out the sweetness of this generally sweet beer. Hmm. So it's smelling pretty clean and malty. There's almost a honey, a honey note to the smell. And there is a, a faint juiciness or a wine-like quality to that as well. That's really quite a, a fetching combination of, of smells. So you have this just, just faint uh, wine grape or grape wine juiciness, and then you have this uh, like honey sweetness and this really nice like, like brown bread, dark sweet brown bread maltiness to the, to the nose. Uh, it doesn't have that much of a head, a little bit, but not too much. Let's uh, dive in. Hmm. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Happy dance, happy dance, happy dance. Um, so, really good. It is recognizably a wee heavy. There's still that, that super rich, um, like, it's approaching sweetness. It's getting sweet. Uh, this is still relatively cold. It's been out of my fridge probably half an hour. Um, but it's, I'm not expecting the sweetness to have been depressed that much by the temperature at, at right now. Did you have this really nice, like super sweet brown bread sweetness? Um, probably a year ago, I'm guessing. I talked about another beer and I can't recall what it was, but I described it with the idea that, um, oh, uh, I think it's like Longhorn Steakhouse or one of the, one of the chain steakhouses 
that brings out bread to your table before the meal, um, bread with butter. They're known for having like a few different kinds of bread, mini loaves of several different types of bread at the table. And one of those is a, a brown loaf with, with rolled oats on the outside. And it's a very sweet brown bread. So that's the kind of sweetness I'm getting here. It's, it's bready, malty, really nice, um, but not like candy sweet, not cloyingly sweet. And then you also have this, this just kind of, kind of hint of breadth to it that that's been, it's, it's like juicier. It's, it's a lighter uh, flavor and it's, it's kind of there at the beginning and maybe halfway through each of the different flavors in this, I'm going to say are sweet, but they're different kinds of sweet and they have different characteristics and working together, they avoid the super rich, like, um, uh, uh, pancake syrup, like butter syrup, Miss Butterworth's um, uh, kind of cloying sweetness. They, they avoid that. They skirt that. You have that, that kind of rich brown bread uh, nutty sweetness at the beginning. You've got this kind of thinner, I would probably compare it almost to a, not a Lundberg's rice syrup, but maybe, um, huh, this is another one I've described, but I'd expect very, very few of you to have experience with this. Um, milkweed. Milkweed leaves in the mornings produce a dew, a little drop of a clear um, syrup that is sweet. And it's a really thin, light, delicate sweetness. So that's kind of dancing around the, the, the front half of this beer. And then you get this, this uh, it's almost like, it's almost gravelly, uh, like like brown. It's like this brown sugar gravel, and I know the word gravel means nothing in <laughs> in the context of drinking beer. But it's like it's kind of on the bottom, under the tires, and you start picking it up as the other flavors have started to wash away. But it's like a really nice, like a clean brown sugar sweetness. You're not looking at a syrup. The, the, sh the sugar, it dissolves in your tongue, and then it goes away. And you're left with this really pleasant, um, just kind of warmth. Hmm. Perhaps a hint of, uh, like, really ripe apples. That's really nice. I like this one a heck of a lot. Uh, so like I said, this is a 2018 bottling. I bought it myself in 2022. Um, so I've had it about two and a half years in my cupboard. Uh, being a five-year-old bottle of beer, I'm expecting a lot of the residual yeast to have worked on the sugars that are left behind. But like I said, this beer is known for being sweet. And typically the aging does not diminish the sweetness significantly. So it's probably largely thanks to the use of, the clever use of Chardonnay barrels to bring this beer, to lighten this beer, to brighten it up, to expand its upper, upper regions of flavors, the brighter, the slightly acidic, uh, things like that, that just help come alongside the sweet, the, the super cloying sweetness and just enliven the beer. <laughs> and I really appreciate that. That has turned out very nicely. Um, I don't know that you'll be able to find this anywhere, likely, except maybe some enthusiasts' uh, cupboards. Brasserie Silly apparently is known for shipping. They, they, you can find their stuff. Um, they have a, or they have a very uh, active import program in the U.S., I guess, would be a way to describe it. They're not hard to find, from what I understand. But for a super, an, uh, an older beer like this, and it appears to have been a one-off style, um, I don't know that you would be able to find it. But if you do... I recommend it, even if Scottish wee heavies or Scotch wee heavies aren't your thing. Anyways, they have not been my thing, but today, this one definitely is. This is Matthew, chewing the brew, enjoying the Brasserie Silly's Scotch Silly Chardonnay Barrel Aged Scotch Wee Heavy. That's a mouthful. And I'm going to take more mouthfuls of this. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.